to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapp. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tatman. This is our regular weekly legislative update where we highlight the recently completed week of the 2023 regular session of the Louisiana legislature. And we look ahead to which is now the final week of the legislative session. We have four days remaining in the 2023 regular session. Uh, It is the time in the legislative session where we're no longer doing committee meetings or there are very few committee meetings and they're mostly hearing House resolutions and Senate resolutions. Uh, We also are seeing a lot of floor action uh, because uh, this is uh, the deadline for the crossover rule is uh, June 5th, Monday, today at 5 o'clock. Um, the, there's a race in the Senate and the House to hear all of the bills on third reading and final passage, uh, because once the crossover rule takes effect, uh, in order to hear a bill on third reading and final passage, you have to get a two thirds suspension of the rules. And so even if your bill only needs a simple majority, which is 53 in the House and 20 in the Senate, uh, you would need 70 in the House and 26 in the Senate just to hear it. So let's talk about some of the big issues. Uh, Lots went on with the budget uh, last week. There was lots of uh, very intense uh, conversations going on about the budget. As I've mentioned before, the big deal is busting the cap. Uh, It is the biggest challenge right now for the legislature. We have Uh, We're awash in one-time cash, $2.2 billion in better-than-expected tax collections uh, over the past two years, and really, frankly, likely uh, more to come in the coming year, a figure well beyond what forecasters predicted just a few months ago. Um, What do we do with all that money? Uh, And that's the political rift that's going on right now in the current session. So the Senate and Governor John Bell Edwards want to bust the cap. They want portions of the one-time cash spent on a slate of infrastructure projects. The Senate version of the budget adds uh, back uh, $284 million in annual recurring dollars to fund a teacher pay raise, which was stripped out in the House. Uh, that fund, that pay raise was is short of what the governor asked for. It's only two thousand for K twelve teacher pay raises and a thousand for school support workers. John Bell wanted uh, to do three thousand for school teachers and fifteen hundred uh, for support workers. So um, the Senate uh, plan also grows some funding uh, with this extra money for key coastal restoration programs, uh, forty million dollar. Uh, grant for homeowners who want to participate in the Fortified Home Program, which is that program where you build back your home stronger uh, so that in, for example, high wind areas, hurricane prone areas, uh, your roof won't blow off. And we know that's a big deal. If your roof stays on, uh, damages are 70 percent less than they would be if, it, if you lose any part of your roof. Um, the, the bill also would pay down roughly a half a billion dollars, $441 million in pension debt. Uh, we haven't paid pension debt for a long time. This would go a long way toward that. Uh, Cortez's plan would require the House to raise the spending limit in order to fund uh, lawmakers' district projects, as well as $311 million in hospital funding that the Senate budget only unlocks if the cap is raised. So tensions are high. The budget will come down to the wire. It is actually on the Senate uh, floor today for third reading and final passage. Uh, We'll see if it is moved over to the House. Um, There is a lot of negotiation that perhaps the budget won't move until the cap is busted, but we'll see. I want to take a a moment for a commercial break. I don't do commercials. We do not make money on this podcast. This is strictly informational for our clients, our friends, and our followers. Um, But I want to plug Jeremy Alford. Jeremy Alford is the uh, publisher and editor of La Politics Weekly, uh, it uh, and also the tracker. Uh, it's Louisiana's leading trade publication for elected officials, campaign professionals, and donors. We subscribe to it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it is the most up to date and the most insider information you'll get on what's going on in politics. If you're interested in Louisiana politics, go to La Politics. 
uh, com. Look, Jeremy is very accomplished. He's a regular contributor uh, in uh, New York Times, uh, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, C-SPAN. Um, Jeremy also is the author of a book uh, called The Last Constitution. If you have not read it, you really do need to read it. Uh, was really well done uh, in collaboration with uh, former Speaker of, uh, of the House and uh, Bubba Henry, and just a great book. He also uh, was a co-author on the book Long Shot, which is the story of uh, John Bell Edwards' rise to the governorship. Uh, his political news syndication is carried also by more than a dozen newspapers and magazines across Louisiana. So check Jeremy out at lapolitics.com. Uh, if you're, you want to know what's going on, that's you listen to this podcast and you subscribe to his newsletter. Very cheap, very, I'm sorry, very inexpensive and worth every penny of it. So there were a couple of other bills that were really interesting that drew a lot of uh, uh, angst uh, in the last week. Uh, the Louisiana legislature uh, had, a, had a bill that dealed with, dealt with uh, uh, ownership of uh, land in Louisiana by foreign adversaries, as it's quoted. Uh, there are a, a number of Republican-led states that want to prevent foreign actors from buying up uh, important land in the state. Uh, these bills have garnered a wave of opposition and protests from Chinese-American citizens, including uh, many college professors who say the legislation is discriminatory and could threaten their ability to buy homes and so on. Uh, so there are a number of bills, House Bill uh, 537, uh, which has drawn the most scrutiny. Um, the House did approve that bill, 78 to 22, uh, and uh, it would basically ban anyone from China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Russia, Venezuela from buying or leasing property in Louisiana. Watch that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. There's another bill that uh, created a lot of controversy uh, during this legislative session. Uh, it is referred to as the Gender Affirming Care Bill. It is House Bill 648 by Gabe Furment. Um, it was that bill died in the Senate Health and Welfare Committee on a 4 3 vote. Very, very intense uh, testimony, very intense conversation. It failed. But the bill was revived in a procedural process whereby the Senate recommitted the bill, voted to recommit the bill to the Senate Judiciary A Committee. The justification for that recommittal was related to the part of the bill that dealt with the civil law aspects of it. So the Judiciary A Committee is the Senate committee charged with that jurisdiction. The bill was passed out of uh, Senate Judiciary A and uh, is on the floor for final passage. Texas just passed a bill this week uh, that would uh, ban doctors from giving treatment such as puberty, puberty blockers, hormones, uh, and surgeries to people younger than 18. Expect heavy debate uh, when this bill is on the Senate floor on Monday. Uh, let's move over to film and economic development. House Bill 562 by Speaker Sheck Snyder uh, was debated on the Senate floor last night. It passed 34 to 4, pretty overwhelmingly. The legislation simply extends the sunset, provides for better exposure uh, to Louisiana by requiring the promotional graphic, like the Georgia peach, to be moved up in the final product. Georgia has the peach. We're going to get a new logo that's going to be very uh, noticeable. Uh, it also provides more robust reporting of where the dollars uh, in the program are spent, uh, many areas benefit from the film program, regardless of where the project was actually filmed at. The bill would help track expenditures where they happen, like lumber from North Louisiana, caterer, caterers from areas of South Louisiana that might not have on-location filming or studios. So the program uh, is known as the Motion Picture Inv Investor Tax Credit. It Look, you know, it brings in billions of dollars each year in investment, uh, it creates over 10,000 high-quality, high-paying jobs. It's a really good bill. It's a clean industry, and uh, it, it helps reverse the brain drain of our state. So currently, the sunset is at 2025. This would extend the sunset to 2031. So here's a did you know. Uh, did you know there was a bill that would limit young people access to social media? There is. So Senate Bill 162 by Senator McMath of Covington would address what he calls a public health, cri health crisis of children and teenagers spending too much time on social media 
and encountering dangerous contact. Uh, uh, it, it is modeled uh, after a Utah law that banned the use of social media without their parents' permission. If the bill is passed and enacted, it would, ta- it would not take effect until July 1st of 2024, which would give the legislature and regulatory bodies more time to fine-tune that initiative. I did not mention it previously, but I thought it was an interesting piece. So remember, you can watch all of the action at the Capitol live or through archived video proceedings. The state website is www.legis. Dot la.gov. That's www.legis.la.gov. You can also download the app, LA Ledge, to watch the final week of uh, the regular session. Um, could be a veto session. Could be a special session. We'll see. Uh, they're both fantastic resources, and just like Jeremy's publication, you should tune into those. So we are the Pelican Brief. You can follow us on social media. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Our social media handle on all platforms is at PelicanBrief225. That's at PelicanBrief225. If you want to watch us on YouTube, if you're not already doing that, we are on YouTube at ThePelicanBrief225. And you can listen to the program on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. So please like subscribe and share. If you have any issues that you think we should dig deeper into, please let us know. You can post in our feeds or email our show at the Pelican Brief 225 at gmail.com. So you know the rule. If you have a good take, we'll mention it on the show. If you have a great take, you're going to end up being a guest. And speaking of guests, we are in the process of uh, scheduling a few very interesting guests. Tyler Bridges will be on our show soon. Uh, also, gubernatorial candidate uh, John Schroeder uh, will be recording uh, our podcast very soon, as well as uh, other gubernatorial and statewide candidates. In addition to that, we're going to cover a lot of the legislative races. So a lot of legislative candidates will come on our show, and you know we're going to ask them, what made you run? Uh, why are you qualified to do it? What are you going to do uh, when you're elected and how are you going to get elected? And so those are the four questions that we ask everybody, whether they're a governor, a state rep or a dog catcher. So until next week, we are the Pelican Brief. <laughs>